Hi, Peter Charles here for To Life Fly Fishing. And today let's look at fishing intermediate lines. Now, a lot of you have probably never ever tried an intermediate line and may be turned off with the problems of getting it out of the water and getting on its way. So let's get rid of that part of it right off the bat. If you want to fish an intermediate line, you're not going to be able to pull it out of the water like a floater. That's a given. We all know that. However, if you take your time with an intermediate line, it will come out quite cleanly. You just have to lift slowly, and it'll come out quite well. Uh, on one of my videos, uh, I was trying out this uh, old line on my new Loomis Asquith rod, and I was lifting somewhere between 50 and 55 feet out of the guides, out of the water, without a roller cast. So that gives you an idea what can be done. Also, here's another video of me with my NRX 9-foot uh, 4-weight trout rod. I have a modified uh, line on there. I had taken a, a Velocity um, Intermediate and cut it up and put a floating uh, running line on it. And I'm picking a 32-foot full intermediate head out of the water with a 9-foot 5-weight, sorry, a 9-foot 4-weight, I should say, without any preliminary roll cast. So, it's just a matter of technique. If you lift it nice and smoothly and slowly, it will come out of the water. But even if you need to strip it in, like when we're fishing with striped bass, we fish the fly quite close, close to us because the fish can hit quite close to us. So as a consequence, I've got probably half or more, and more than half of the head in the guides and in the stripping basket. But we can get it back on, that's easy to get out then, but then I can get it back on its way with one roll cast or one spay cast just to work the head out, then boom, back, boom, gone, and there's a 90 foot cast. So you, you could see that you should not be uh, put off by this whole idea that they're difficult to get out of the water. Uh, if you have some clean techniques of just a very smooth lift or just a simple spay cast or a simple roll cast and boom, you're ready to get going. So an intermediate shouldn't cause anybody any problems uh, on the lift. And even when I'm waist deep in water in Pleasant Bay in Cape Cod, I still pull that intermediate out of the water without any problems. So let's put that aside and get on with you know, the actual fishing of these lines. So first off, before I get into uh, too much in the fishing detail, I want to talk about the fact that there's two basic types. I've got these intermediate lines in front of me. Here I've got the beach line and it has a clear head with a green running line and that running line floats. Now that's an important consideration when you are fishing in a river because we're stripping line in, the line is hitting the water and if we had a, a full intermediate where the running line is intermediate, that running line will sink. It'll snag up on the bottom and not only that when you try to make a cast it doesn't want to come out of the water that easily. So it sucks all the energy out of your cast as it's trying to come out of the water. So the worst thing you can use uh, on a river is a line like this one, which is the striper intermediate, which is a full intermediate, including the running line. So are these two here. These are older model lines, the old cold water salt lines, and they have a clear front end and the running line is uh, aqua blue, but it's also an intermediate running line. You cannot use these things in rivers because that running line wants to sink. And if you're waiting, you're screwed, okay, if that running line goes under the water. So these two here have the floating running lines. This is a sni Airflow Sniper and this is an Airflow Beach. And they have the floating running lines, which is essential for river fishing. However, if I'm fishing with a stripping basket or I'm fishing out of a boat, these are great. And there's an advantage to these uh, lines. When you have an intermediate running line, one of the, the nice things about them is they allow the head to get a little deeper because with the floating running lines, they're holding the head up a little bit, the back end of the head up a little bit, which increases that angle. So it means it increases the lift a little bit so the line doesn't get down quite as deep. When we're talking about these running lines here that are full intermediates, you don't get that problem. The running line goes under the water, no trouble whatsoever. The other interesting thing about these running lines is that because they're thinner, uh, they shoot very well, and also they don't catch the wind as much as a floater. 
when you've got a stripping basket full of line and you've got a strong wind, uh, the thicker that running line is, the more likely it is to be picked up out of the basket by the wind and scattered down the beach. That's happened to me more than enough times with these lines, let alone a floater. So when you're dealing with the thick running line of a floater, uh, you do have to worry about the wind picking it up and carrying it away. The other thing is that when you're on a boat, you have the same problem. You've got your running line laying on the round on the bottom of the boat, and the wind can come along and just pick it up and toss it into the water if it's a very windy day. So having the thinner running line, you get a better shoot, and you also have less problems with the wind kicking it around when, it, when you've stripped it all in. So keep that in mind that we have these two flavors, the one with the floating running line, the one with the sinking running line. They each have their advantages. If you're fishing in a river while waiting, don't use the intermediate running line. You will regret it very quickly. If you're on a boat or you've got a stripping basket, then go with the intermediate running lines because they are really good. The only reason why I might want to use a floating running line like this one right here is when I don't need to get very deep. So if uh, I'm, so let's say, fishing uh, Pleasant Bay in low tide, uh, I don't want to be dragging. I could drag the bottom if I'm fishing a clouser with this line here. This one, uh, the, that floating running line holds it up just a little bit. And so when I'm stripping, it's just a little less deep. And, you know, given the conditions, that might be an advantage. So what about the actual fishing of intermediate running lines? Well, I've talked about this subject many times in many videos, is that I match my flies to the line I'm using. And I always want my fly to sink faster than the line I'm using it on. So in other words, if I'm using an intermediate running line, I'm not going to use a, line, a fly that floats. I want to use a, a fly that gets down and gets down well. And when I'm using a sinking line, I want a fly that gets down even faster. So I always want my fly to beat the line down. So the fly is down here and the line's up here. I don't want it the other way. So as a consequence, when I'm putting all this together to fish, one of the things I'm thinking about is leaders. I don't like my sinking lines close to the fish. Now, with some fish, it probably won't bother them. They'll hit it anyway. But with other fish, you know, a fish that might be a little bit skittish, um, just a less aggressive fish, it may not hit the fly if it's, you know, if the uh, fly is too close to the, uh, the fly line. So when I combine those fast sinking flies with a, a striper line like this one, uh, or one of these, for example, and I'm fishing for striped bass, I might use an 8 to 10 foot leader. And it's not a problem casting them with these lines. So it's very typical for me to use long leaders and fast sinking flies with my intermediate lines. So the, the fly is actually running below the level of the fly line. So if the fly line is a foot deep, and I'm, say, got a 10 foot leader and a, and a clouser, that, that clouser could be anywhere from 6 inches to a foot deeper than the end of the, the intermediate fly line. So it's something to consider that we're, we're going to match up not only the intermediate, but I'm also going to match up the, um, the leader and the fly to get the maximum benefit out of the line. Now, you've also got the choice of swinging the fly, or you can um, strip it, or you can combine both in the same uh, cast. One of the things we can do uh, is, is a different concept from fishing a floater or a, um, a sink tip is I can set up the cast by casting more upstream. If I'm in a river situation, I'll cast more upstream than usual, and then I won't do anything, and I'll just let the current take the intermediate, and the intermediate is just sinking nice and slowly. And when it starts getting around about, you know, 30 degrees downstream thereabouts, I'll take it under tension. And now that, that thing's way down, right? And I can just bring it around very, very slowly, very deeply. If I want to make a cast and stay high, I don't do that. I just cast it out at 30 degrees and let it swing. So by having a setup section to the actual swing of the line, I can control the depth very, very well. Just how far upstream do I want to cast before I come onto that point where I bring it under tension? And it just controls the sink. It's beautiful. I mean, you can really, really manage your swings and when you're setting up for stripping as well. Because keep in mind, once you start stripping this thing, it doesn't come up that easily. It wants to stay down. And it will stay down until the fly line is fairly close to you. 
So you can bring that fly in maybe 20 feet from you, and it's, you'd be surprised how far down it is. When you, if you've got clear water, you'll look, and you'll be amazed how far down your fly is when it's 20 feet away from you. So it will stay down when you're stripping it. There's a couple of other things to think about, which is really, really cool. Imagine this is my rod for a second. If I'm holding my rod tip way up in the air, I'm causing my fly line to run at an angle, a sharper angle, which causes it to lift. So if I hold my rod up in the air, I'm going to cause my fly line, my intermediate fly line, to run more shallow. If I put my rod tip down onto the water, my intermediate line will run much, much deeper. And you want to know something that's really cool? Let's say you're wading down a river, fishing, wading, fishing, wading, and you come across around a corner and there's a really deep pool. And you're going, oh, my intermediate's not going to get down to the bottom of that. Well, you know what you do? Shove your rod tip in the water. <laughs> You'll drag that intermediate right down. And now you're fishing three, four, five feet down in that pool. So since you don't have the problem with, um, uh, you know, the, the whole line being hung up at the top, because it's a floater, you can control depth just by changing your rod angle, putting your rod tip in the water, keeping it at the water's surface or keeping the rod tip up in the air you're changing the depth at which that fly will run and you're changing and the depth the fly line will run so you can really really manage depth very very well now another thing people will say well you can't mend an intermediate well there's two things to that first you can mend it when it hits the water doing a pullback mend so as long as you don't let it sink you know it hits the water you can do a mend immediately and i do that quite often when i'm fishing for steelhead um, where, where is it? With this old intermediate long belly. Or sometimes I even use this intermediate uh, double taper. and actually works quite well. And I'll do exactly that. Cast, pull back mend, drop tension in, sink the line and away I go. So you can do it that immediately. But here's another point which people who fish sink tips don't appreciate. When you're swinging a fly with intermediate, you don't need to mend very much. There's no need to mend. You don't get that big belly being dragged by the current. The first thing you find out with intermediate, it runs quite straight. And you don't have those big bellies forming the way you do with a floater sink tip setup. You don't get that drastic change in the density which causes the, this kind of hinging right where the sink tip and the floater come together. So you get almost like a, a J shape in the way your fly line is coming across through the water. That doesn't happen with an intermediate, so I don't need to mend it. It's running relatively straight. Uh, if you're fishing an intermediate in clear water, and you're fishing it in current, and you cast it across the current, take a good look. You'd be surprised how straight it runs. So you're not worrying about, oh, i got to mend it to slow the fly line down, all that. No, it doesn't matter. You know, there's no need for any kind of worry at all in that, right, that regard. Something else which is kind of cool about intermediates, uh, it's the same kind of problem, is because they're below the surface of the water, you can't mend them, obviously. But you know what? They run slower just because they're below the surface of the water. Uh, we don't appreciate how different the current speeds are depending on where the fly line and the fly is in the water column. The water that's running the fastest in the river is usually a few inches below the surface of the water, the river. Uh, and that, um, as I say, I'm generalizing because different structures can cause different conditions. But if you just got a straight run, the water at the surface is slowed slightly with contact with air. And that depends on wind direction. If the wind is going upstream, it's going to slow it more. If it's going downstream, it may not slow it at all. It may actually speed it up. But the water at the surface is, you know, if there's no wind, will be slightly slower than the water an inch or two underneath. But as we go down further in the water column, what we find is that the rough bottom slows the currents down. So the further down you get, the slower the current will run because of the turbulence caused by the bottom friction of the water running over stones and weeds and gravel and all that kind of stuff and logs and whatever else debris is down there. So if you can get your line out of that top few inches, say a foot down, 18 inches down, it's running a lot slower than what it would be if it was at the surface. 
And that is tremendous advantage in cold water when you're swinging flies for steelhead or trout in cold water. Is it slows right down. You get this very smooth, straight, slow swing. So no need to mend to slow it down. It's already going slow. So this idea of, well, you can't mend one, is irrelevant. You know, we don't have to mend an intermediate. So just put that out of your mind. <laughs> it's not a consideration. If we're going to strip an intermediate, okay, and we want to run a, a, a streamer on the end of an intermediate, and we're going to strip it back like, like I often do for trout or for smallmouth bass, you know, uh, the thing is I keep my rod tip down. So when I'm stripping, I'm not, you know, increasing that angle. And, you know, I can actually, whether I cast it across the current or more downstream, I can control the speed. Um, so I can cast it fairly far downstream uh, at a, a sharper angle and then bring it across on, on the strip and it will behave differently than if I cast it directly across the, the, the stream. So you can play with your casting angles to get different presentations. Now the other thing that's kind of cool about intermediates, as you saw in my previous uh, video, intermediate diameter of this fly line is skinnier than a floater of the same weight. So what does that mean for you when you're fishing in wind? Or you want to go for distance? Guess what? These intermediates handle the wind a lot better than a floater. And generally speaking, they will cast farther than a floater because they are less wind resistant. That's why these feel a little heavier and full sinking lines feel a lot heavier. It's because we don't have the wind resistance when we're casting these things. So when I make a back cast with a full intermediate, it punches into the wind behind me a lot better than a floater. So when I come forward, it's got more momentum going backwards. So as I'm coming forward, I'm feeling more weight, but it's because the line has more energy because less of it's been sucked out by the, uh, wind resistance. So you end up with nicer casts. Um, well, I'm gonna throw up a picture of a fish um, that I caught on a cast that was over 100 foot with a single hand rod. And it was made possible because I was using an intermediate line. I cannot cast a floater 100 feet, but I can cast uh, an intermediate 100 feet on that rod. So it's, you know, you do get more distance out of an intermediate than you will out of a floater. So when you really need to go far with a streamer, I mean, you're, you're fishing a big river or like we are in lakes or, or in the ocean, and you really want to get it out there. Um, the intermediate is often the best choice, even when it's really not necessary for the depth. It's just its ability to go far is the great thing. So to wrap this all up, intermediates are one of my favorite lines. I use them a lot. I've caught a ton of fish on intermediates. And uh, I would never go uh, streamer fishing without an intermediate in my gear bag, never. And if I'm using wet flies for trout, same thing. I've got an intermediate in the gear bag, and it's usually on the rod. And even in steelhead fishing, um, I use a lot of sink tips for steelhead fishing, um, you know, early to mid-season. But when that water gets cold, you know, I'm onto something like this. It really slows down. And the subtle presentation of my leaders on these things are like 12 to 15 foot long. You get this great separation. You've got this clear cold water the steelhead is sitting in, and you've got this big separation between you and the fly line, and that fly is kicking in the current back and forth, and that line comes across so slowly. Oh my, oh my, you just hang on, because they whack it. So, please, don't be afraid of intermediate lines. They're not hard to cast. In fact, once you've got them out of the water, they really go. And when you're fishing wet flies or streamers, trust me on this one, they are very effective. And you'll end up catching more fish than you would if you were using a floater. So give them a try. Cheers.